be able to we want you to be able to find work that you can do uh, as an undergraduate or a fresh graduate and be able to volunteer for them. Uh, internships are a very important way of um, learning. Internships are a way of becoming a part of the industry you want to be in. Before we move into all of that, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Christian Sopurucci. Um, if you have been a participant in any PFF seminar, then you already know me. If you are not, then it's okay for me to introduce myself to you again. Um, I am the president of Precious Fountain Foundation. Um, I have a team that works with me. And um, I also have a team of teachers for this particular event. Precious Fountain Foundation um, is a vision dedicated to intervening in defective areas of Nigerian education. We do this by giving students seminars. We do this by humanitarian work. And we also do this by um, visiting organizations that provide the education in remote areas of Nigeria, mission schools and things of that nature, IDP camps where people are allowed to be educated and things of that nature. We support educational drive wherever we find it. And then um, we do humanitarian work towards children. And um, as part of our efforts in um, ensuring that Nigerian students are able to benefit from more knowledge, especially during this period of ASU strike. We have set this seminar up. Our teachers are volunteers. Um, they are not paid. So we are people who, are, who have mastered the act of internship. So they understand how to look for internships. They have worked in different roles all over their time as undergraduates and as graduates today. Um, if you look through their portfolio, you are going to find that this portfolio is really impressive. We have people who will be teaching you internship 101. That is what internship is all about, how you can benefit from it and everything. We have somebody who will be teaching you how to use your CVs to maximize internships because some of you who are students will say i have no cv how can i apply for jobs i have no cv how can i become a volunteer at this or that organization we have someone who will teach you that we also have someone who will tell you how to use linkedin to become better in applying for rules in some of these organizations um each of these are ways you can start. It is not all there is, but it is a place for you to start. If you need further mentorship, further information, you can contact them, you can contact me. We are just a phone call away or a WhatsApp message away or an email away. Everyone on this call now must have received an email from us sending you details of this event. So you can reply to that email. You can also send us your own emails if you have any questions. What we want to do, particularly with this training, uh, is tied to our general vision as an organization. As an organization, we want to make sure that education in Nigeria that needs help is helped. Things that we cannot or, or normally find in Nigeria, we're able to find it. We are offering a private uh, help, a private aid, so to speak, to Nigerian students in order to put them at par with their classmates all over the world. I'm sure you know that your classmates are your classmates, but your classmates are not your mates in the sense that your classmates today are people that you are sharing the world with. They are also the people you are um, going to be um, 
looking at the work together with, if we are going to look for a work now, I am going to compare you with your classmates. Well, you know that today, due to how wide and how connected the world is, opportunities that you as an undergraduate student or a fresh graduate from Nigeria is looking for, people from all over the world are looking for it as well, right? One of my students found an internship to um, a, the International Bar Association in London. The, the competition for that role was tough. There were students applying from universities in London, in India, and Nigeria. He later got in. He's an undergraduate student from Obafemi Awolowo University in Nigeria. But he was able to get into that role because he knew what to do. He knew how to apply for internships. These internships are really tough sometimes, but it's ordinary students like you that get them as well. I know of a student who interned with the Bank of America in London. Um, it was a role that required only two people from all over the world, only two students. And she got it. That was in 2019. They sponsored her to come to London to intern for the time and then return back to Nigeria to complete her education. So I'm basically saying that where you are is not a, a problem. Nothing is supposed to act as a hindrance for you to find quality internships. If you want to be somebody who will work in a top firm tomorrow, you have to place yourself where the top firms will locate you, right? They will not be able to see you if you're in your interior village somewhere hiding. So internships are a way to say I'm here. Also bring you close to what you think, what you are looking for. I am particularly interested in making sure that students from Nigeria, especially the South, Southeast and South South are able to um, listen to this talk. I did my undergraduate education in Imo State University, and I did not know that I had the opportunities to apply for internships. Many universities in the West already have a strong student population that know, oh, I can apply for internships, I can apply for internships. But majorly universities in the Southeast, many students are not aware of this. First of all, they think, oh, I'm in first year, I don't qualify, I'm too young. I don't know anything. What do I know about an oil company? What is, you know, there are so many things that act as hindrances that give you that calm. Oh, don't, don't worry yourself, just relax. But it is not supposed to be like that. This training today will teach you from where you are, how to move from there to working with organizations that you hope to work with in the future. So let's say, if you're a graduate of, uh, if you're a student of philosophy and you work, want to work with Shell or with um, KPMG or with any of the top firms, there is a way you can work your way towards becoming an intern there. Internships can happen in many ways and in different um, capacities. You can intern in the vice chancellor's office of a university that is still in session. You can, um, become a student intern in a firm that you admire, right? So ensure that you pay close attention to the training that will be happening soon. Our speaker is very seasoned. His name to, is Great Oyiki. He's the one that will be talking today. And um, I have very high hopes that he will be able to deliver. I totally trust him. And I think that you should also be able to have trust in him. Um, have a pen and paper ready um, or use your phone to type. But because I expect you to be using your phone for this um, lesson um, or training, I usually say lessons because I'm a teacher. So <laughs> if you have your pen and paper, get ready to ask questions. I want serious students who will say, after sitting through this session, I was able to apply for internships. And I will be looking forward to students who have not applied for any internship before. 
if you know you believe that you cannot get an internship or you don't have the money to get into these places or you don't even know what to do, you are the perfect person for this training, right? If you are somebody you've never done anything, I see in the Google form that we released, a number of you said I've never had an internship experience. I don't even know what internship entails. That's perfect. That's the kind of person we want. Approach this training with an open mind. Ask very serious questions, right? We want to make a difference in one person. If we can find one person that is able to take this lesson and work with it, then we are sure we've made a difference. So I have great capacity in the person who will be teaching today to announce it. As I said, he is very experienced in this. He has worked for different organizations. And if there is somebody who I think will relate to your experience as a, an undergraduate student or a fresh graduate, he is the person. He can walk you through the ropes. And um, today he'll be taking you through a general um, understanding of what internship looks like. May I expect he may be telling us one or two of his own personal stories to motivate you. So you that is the undergraduate student, don't sit at home, don't do it. Don't, don't waste your time. I've told my friends, um, Asu may not call off the strike this year. I, 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 a, a bird whispered to me, so don't quote me. I don't know, but it's possible the strike may not be called off this year. Or if you have not been doing anything so far till this time, this is your opportunity. So with that said, I will leave you some 15 minutes break. If you need to quickly run an errand, do that. If you want to eat something, do that. If you want to do anything, do that. If you want to ask any question, drop it in the chat or just talk. We can request to be unmuted. Mm -hmm. But I'll give you a 15 minutes break so that our speaker will start immediately. It is eight on the dot. We are not going to waste time because we want only serious people. So stay close to your phone. We have participants all over the world. Um, I can see people from India, from uh, the US, and it's some of these. I see students who are doing their masters in Norway and all that, and in Canada. The point is, even in this call, there are so many people from different parts of the world. So you can just understand that there are many people who are looking for opportunities. There are just 24 people on this call at the moment. Yet we have participants from all over the world. So that is to tell you that you being a student in, let's say, um, Obafemi Awolo University or Nandiazikiwe University does not mean that you are obscure. You are not an ordinary undergraduate student. You are part of a large academic family and the opportunities that are there, you can take it if you want. You can take it if you want. Any one of us can take those opportunities if you want. And that is the point of this training. So I'm going to stop talking now. If you have a friend who is an undergraduate that needs to get in on this call now, you have to call them immediately. We will be starting in the next 15 minutes. Get yourself ready, get your writing materials. If you are not yet hearing me clearly, find a spot in your house that is clear. Sit down and by eight o'clock, Great Oyiki will take off. And um, I hope that everyone here would be imparted from the knowledge you'll be sharing. Thank you and see you by eight o'clock. Bye. So I'm, I'm still around. The call will still be open. You can call your friends, but once it's immediately eight o'clock, we will be starting. Um, Great Oiki will start speaking. Right. I'll be open to take your questions if you have any. If there is something that confuses you, something you need to quickly have me explain, I'll be glad to do that. You can send me direct messages on the chat. Uh, you can also send me messages on WhatsApp. You can contact any member of our team. Um, 
So, but once it's eight o'clock, our first lessons for today will begin. I'm <laughs> 
Okay, guys, we are back again. Um, if you can't hear anything, that is because we are taking a break till eight o'clock, as I pointed out. Um, I want to say thank you, everyone, to for coming. Um, I think Great is here already. I'm going to pin him. Hi, Prof. Good evening. So, yes. Hi, hi, great. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Okay, I am going to make you a presenter or a co-host so that you can share your screen. If you have anything to share with us as um, a way to um, keep your audience with you, right? All right, all right, that's fine. That's so fine. I've already done that. Um, it's eight o'clock. I hope you are ready to start running. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm ready. So I hi everyone, like I'm very happy to be here. I'm very, very happy and I feel privileged because for me it's it's uh is a is a is a means of giving back to, to the society because of course I was once a student, even if those who are graduated I here, I was once in that position as well trying to get uh, most called placements, internship placements and all of those things. And um, I, don't, I, I know we have like a mixture of different students. So I, I see someone wisdom or below from Namde Azikewe, I guess. So I don't know, could you tell me about your, your school is affected by the strike, yeah, wisdom? Wisdom, can you hear me? Well, can someone else just tell me about their experience with the strike? Someone from a public school that has been affected okay, by the strike. I, 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 I yes, don't. good evening. Okay, um, my school is part of the Asu Wahala or Asu Saga. Yeah, it's really sad. And How many months is it now? I think five, five, five months. months. Yes, yeah, oh, so sorry. it's not been easy like that. You know, trying to get internship placement and all. Some will tell you that um, they are accept and everything. And I saw this um the flyer for this webinar, so I decided to. I'm really sorry about it. When I was in hundred level after my first semester. We had this six month strike. That was in 2013, I think. Uh, and it was crazy. And it was really, really bad for for us. Well, we didn't know it was that bad because then it wasn't really a common thing for a under level student or undergraduate to be doing like internship in big. We didn't know, especially those I finished from BFA for OAU. So it wasn't really a thing for me. I'm really sorry that you guys are going through this. It's really bad, like like very, very bad. My 
I share my, should I say condolences now? So I'm trying to share my screen. I think I have, uh, so I, mean, I was working earlier and I tried to, So I understand I'll be talking about internship, how to get your placement, and all that, and all that. So give me a minute. I'm trying to get it, my my presentation. Hold on. Um. Yeah, I have it now. I'm having an issue with sharing it. Can you see my screen? No, I think you you have to go to share screen. I don't know if you can see it right on the base. Can you see it on the base of the screen? Okay. Or can I just forward it to someone? So the yeah, you can just send it to me in the chat. I can help. Um, wait a minute. Give me a minute. To get um, if you go to the base of the screen, you can see the. No, I can see this share screen. Right. If you click on well, it, it should bring out yeah. a a number of open pages or windows. Right. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you yeah, look yeah. underneath if the yeah. PowerPoint is already open. Okay. It's very now. Yeah. So I. So let's start. Let's start from here. Like, why internship? Why would you want to intern? Really, like everyone, you see your classmates trying to get internship in Alcorn, everybody. You see your parents trying to get internship in. AFC or some other place, and you're like, what's the essence of all of this, really? So, why internship? One very important thing about an internship as an undergraduate is that it gives you it gives you exposure. It gives you exposure. There's something about law. There are different aspects to law. Like when I was in when I was in hundred level, currently I'm that's my current place of work. I I, I didn't know what project finance was. When I was interning, when I was in hundred level, there was these chambers in one small, small office like. like litigation was law and law was litigation. I really, really, really loved litigation. I loved it a lot. Then and. I didn't know anything about corporate law. I didn't know anything about commercial law. I didn't know anything about energy practice. I didn't know anything about IP. Like, of course, maybe I was in 100 level. But even, like some people in 400 level, they knew that these were courses, but they saw it from the perspective of, oh, a lawyer goes to court. He argues on issues like relating to IP and that's all. But there's a transaction aspect of law. And that's one of the things that, that internships, internships will give you. Internship to give you exposure. Granted, now you may not really know what you want to do, but with the help of internship, you would be able to decide to say, oh, maybe I really don't like litigation. Because when you intern in some places, they, they give you exposure. And I'm going to see while into some other points like this. They give you exposure. You, you, you get knowledge of the industry, what's happening in the industry. Now there's the Petroleum Industry Act, what does it say? Even though you don't have like a full grasp of those issues, you, you get a fair knowledge about the things happening because especially those cooling in Nigeria on this call, we are 
we're quite unfortunate to not have syllabus, school syllabus is that we'll talk about different issues. The, if you do energy law, most syllabus would not talk about the new, the PIA that's on board now, or what talks about and everything. And a part of about gaining industry knowledge, if you are writing your exams for your, in, in, in school really, and with, you gain exposure, you get some industry knowledge. I mean, if you're doing energy practice, almost half of, I said energy, energy law, half of your classmates may not be talking about the PIA, may not be talking about any other new legislation. But let's say you, you, you intend now, you have the practical experience, maybe not practical practice, but you have some experience about Imagine you're writing to your lecturer and you're quoting some provisions from the PIA. You'll be really impressed. In addition to gaining exposure to knowing what to do and what not to do, you get some industry knowledge, some really, really market up-to-date knowledge. And it gives you practical experience, really. That's the thing about internship, because in, in law, in undergraduate study, and apologies to many people who are not lawyers here, I'm speaking from the perspective of law, like from a legal uh, perspective about internships. Um, I mean, talk about non-law internships a bit, but majorly it's law. So talking about practical experience, all you've been taught in school is just substantial law, just su substantial law. And uh, unless you go out to intern, you may not see how this thing makes sense. So now your lecturer here has taught you something about banker customer relationship. When the bank, when the customer makes an order, the banker must, what's it called, honor that order and all of those things. And those are just like really, really ideas in your head. You may not really think about how this thing plays. But when you come to practice, you may see life issues of where a, 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 a bank has actually dishonored a check. And talking about, um, practical experience and industry knowledge. When you when you come across some of these issues, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, very clear. One way to you, get you... feedback is to ask people to reply questions on the chat. Yeah, yeah. okay. So what, 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 imagine now, they've taught you, um, customer makes another, the banker honors it, or the bank honors it. So what happens where, does this logic still go to you trying to get money for, me, for my ATM machine, for my ATM, pardon me, does this apply? So these are issues, these are life issues that you'll be able to appreciate with the substantial knowledge you've gained from school. And I mean, commercial awareness, if you if you have internship experience, if you've done some internship, it would make you to be very very maybe quite commercially aware. You would really want to know okay what's happening in this market, what is happening in that market, what are the legal markets we have in the world really like? How is it easy for me to transition from working in an Nigerian law firm to an international law firm? What are the steps? What should I do? And also, also, you meet people, you meet seniors, and these are people that, when I was in undergrad level, I thought like getting into Harvard or Oxford was a big thing. Of course, a big thing, like was a mirage. It's only for, I don't know, maybe people out of this world that get into those schools. But upon meeting many of these guys that have gone and they've returned, upon interacting with them, it made me realize that these are normal people. And it made my aspiration really, really, really higher. And that's one thing, one of the unspoken things that, one of the unspoken things that internship would give you. It would make you really, really aspire for more. It would make you to see that, oh, these dreams are actually valid and they are very, very achievable. So now I have another part where I'm talking about you knowing your industry. You should know your industry. Uh, if you are if you are in the if you are in the legal space if you are in the uh, finance space if you are in the accounting space 
is actually does it, it reflects poorly on you if you don't know the big four accounting firms in Nigeria. It reflects poorly on you because you've not done any research. You should ask yourself some questions. Okay. And I, I believe people here are, are really career, are quite career oriented people. That's why I mean most of you are here. So in the next five years, in the next three years, when I'm done with school, where do I want to work? And it's easier for, for people in school right now because, and um, Prof here can confirm that. When, when, like 10 years and eight years back, internship wasn't a thing. You really didn't, people didn't have an idea of, okay, I, when I'm done, I want to go and work here. Information wasn't easy, information of this kind of issues, about this kind of issues rather, wasn't really accessible that much. It was only, if you say the privilege, I mean, you are schooling in uni life, necessarily you know a local one but they, maybe not necessarily, but these things, they will come to you easily, you know, because when they are doing the program, they can easily go down to, the, to your school, you know, like rather, rather than traveling down to the east to go to Namde as a way to do the program. I mean, these law firms. So now we have platforms like LinkedIn that would, by opening your account and filling in some necessary details, you see people related to your industry. And by studying their profile, and, I, and it goes like this, when I was pretty, when I was, when I was in 400 level, I really started interning in 500 level, quite late compared to what many of you have now. When I was there, I would just look, I would just look at some people's profile, I'd be like, wow, this person works in your body. wow, this must be a very big deal. This must be a very big deal. So I would search, search, and search for LinkedIn, especially, and say, okay, okay. And I'll go through the person's profile to say, oh, well, he finished from law school, he finished from his undergraduate with a good grade, at least a 2 1. Uh, you would understand that there are some type of people they want. And if you're your undergrad, it would make you really adjust your, your orientation to your study. If, if it's something, and one of the important things of in internship really is that it makes you realize, oh, is this law, is this, do I really want to do this law? It gives you that perspective, that clear vision, or do I really want to do this law? And also you get to know the top players in your industry, like the likes of Mr. Benga Oibode, um, Mr. Sue Godalo, those big, big guys. And you read about them, you get to know them. And so those are the, those are the real, the real, First steps to get into to get into um, getting an internship. Really, you need the industry knowledge. You need to know what is happening in the market. Who are the top guys? These law firms that are taking interns. How do they take interns? When do they take interns? And that that still falls under industry knowledge. Really, uh, sorry, learning about the industry and the top players there. The top players could be the law firms or the individuals in the law firms. When do they take interns? What period from what period? When should I apply? Because generally there, 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 are, there are two ways of taking interns. It's either on a rolling basis or on a structured basis. And what I mean by that is that on a structured basis, like if your friend like Udo Duman, they'll tell you that, oh, we only take interns from July to August and first set will come in July. They just went, rounded up yesterday and the second set will come in August. So if you're making your application from January to May, if you have sent in your application to them for them to vet through, then if you get in, you come in either July or August. Aside those two windows, they don't take in any other batch of intern and they'll pay you. But so uh, in some other places, it's on a rolling basis. A rolling basis meaning that, oh, they can take intern this month, they can take intern January, February, in the 12th month of the year. So those are, those are things you should equally ask you could reach out to, after knowing the top players in the industry, reach out to, now just, just search Bang One, you go just search 10 plus. You see someone reach out to, not necessarily a partner for now, reach out to an associate there, a very polite email saying, oh, I really want to know how the internship in your firm or your company is, say the Nigerian Stock Exchange, you want to enter in one of their departments for non-lawyers. So I really want to know how it is when to send an application to send an application to the basic requirements. Reach out to people in that industry, especially through LinkedIn, I'd emphasize LinkedIn, because you see many, many people working in all of those companies in your desired um, place of internship. 
So now we've talked about why you should intern and all of those things. Why should I intern? Why, why, why really should you intern? We've talked about those things. But what do you need to intern really? What do you need to intern? You know, I'm not going to lie to you about oh, saying good grades don't really matter. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not on a two-one in your undergraduate right now, in your law school, you should try and be on make a first class or a two-one. I also forgot one thing. Internship should help your application for further studies. And when applying for future jobs as well. You want to get into the Harvard, you want to get into the Oxford. These things would, would speak a lot. These things would speak a lot. So good grades, talking about good grades. Why, why? I mean, I'm very I'm pretty sure that in the next week you'll see some other webinar talking about how to get into how to get a good internship. As much as you want to get into an internship, you are competing with hundreds of other students who want to get into a, that same spot with you. And most firms, my friend, they, I think it take 12, 24 in all, 12 in, in July and 12 in, what's called, in August. So they take 24 in all. You, I don't know, why would they want to take you if you're, if you, if you're, if you're on a pass, really? Why would they want to take you if you're on a pass when they, 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 they have someone who is on the first class? applying for the same position and is your class maybe not your classmate exactly but your, your classmate from different school or anything why would they want to take you is it that you are most you are more beautiful thank god we won't see your face it's only your cv they will see so it boils down to the point of having good grades and besides internship if you are an undergraduate on this call please try and make good grades i know you must have heard this a thousand times and it's a cliche and even, a, even cliche is even cliche right now. The word cliche is cliche. It's like, but I, I beg you, I beseech you, with if you if you still can make it, try and make a very good grade. It's going to it's going to do so many things for you. It's going to do many, so many things for you. Aside internship, so many things. Because I mean, why why shouldn't you make good grades? Why shouldn't you make good grades really? So try and make good grades, and um. And one tactics you should use is if I'm applying for an internship and uh, let's say I'm on the first class, let me have this calculation in my head. Let's say I'm on the two one rather. If I'm on the 3.4, I'll just put I'm on the two one. There's no, there, on your CV, there's no point putting your grade. If you know it's low, but it's when you know that it's high or it's close to the first class, that you say, okay, I'm on the 4.3, I'm on the 4.4, two one. But if you're on the 3.1, 3.1 is a 2.2. If you're on a 3.4, if you're on a 4.4, that's when you're close to your first class, yeah? So if you're on a 4.4, you can put it, oh, 2.1, 4.4. They know that oh, this one is very close to your first class. If you're on a 3.4, 3.5, 3.5, 3 3.6, there's no point really putting, just put second class upper and let them fight whether it is a good, a strong 2.1 or a low 2.1. So you could equally use you could equally use that in your grade. And um, uh, moving on to the next point, we have activities. Now, in addition to your grade, okay, you you are you are the position where you may not have like so good a grade, and you're like, oh, what would I do? How would I do this? You can start involving yourself in activities. Join a club, be the president of a club, take an executive position. It will give you an edge when making an application, really, because for some of these positions, the the these executives they meet people. I I think that was how I got into Alcoa. Nobody from one of the ways I got into Alcoa. Nobody was it. I think so because I had met Benga everybody. I was um, the general secretary of International Law Students Association chapter in my school. So we had a meeting with, with Mr. Benga or everybody. And um, internship was one of the conversation we had with him. So join, join, join an organization, volunteer for something, 
in addition to your grade, ensure you do other things in school or extracurricular activities. Don't just even be the one that is like reading, 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 reading. But by all means, if it is reading, 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 that would make you to, what's it called now? That would make you to make the good grades. You, you, you should really, you should, you should, you should focus on just reading, 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 reading. But still ensure you in, involve yourself in some extracurricular activities, volunteer, do, do other things, do other things, like build your CV, it's your, it's your CV. Videos. And the interesting thing about it is it's funny because some of the things on my CV, I still make reference to them, like things I did in 2017, 2016. I still make reference to them, like, oh, because it's something you would, it's, it's something you would, that would be a part of you for life. It doesn't go. If you make good grades today, it's forever. Like, good grades would be there for you forever. If you write an article today, that article would be there for you forever. If you do an activity today, you volunteer for something. It's something you've held and you've done it and to be with you forever. Just be, build your CV in that sense. So write articles as well, especially to the law students on this call, even to the finance students. Write articles. There are so many topical issues. You are on strike. There are so many things happening around now. Write articles. And of course, you can't write without reading. It goes without saying that you must have read sufficiently well before you're able to write. So read things online, read current happenings online and write, 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 write. And what it gives to you is imagine. So I know I know of someone who during an internship in Bangwa and the good the guy is in Harvard Business School right now. He he Mr. Asue Igudalu said something and he told Mr. Asue Igudalu politely that it was wrong. That that's not the correct um, correct position, and they were exchanging emails, of course, politely, and eventually it turned out that he was quite right about what he was saying. I mean, the intent, and that's how he got a job after his law school. He worked at Bangwa and the Goodall. So, without without knowledge, you can't write. That's why first off, you need to build your knowledge. You see something happening, read about it, put your two cents out there. Put your two cents out there and write. Just write about it. Okay, this is what I think about it. This is how I see it going and all of those things, you know? So that's about right. And networking. Networking, you, you, for, for most internships, really, for most internships, really, I, I think in, in most internships are gotten through networks. The network you have. You're like, oh, I know of two persons that are working in a very good place right now. They are intense. They are still affected by the strike. Like you pay them very well. And they just reached out to people on LinkedIn to say, oh, well, I'm this, I'm that. And of course, they listed all the activities they've done, perhaps the articles they've written, and they are great. And they are like, oh, I really want to intern in this place and all of those things. And it was very easy for them to, to get into those places. And talking about networking, I got into the Nigeria Stock Exchange through a friend. She just she reached out to the director back then in the Nigeria Stock Exchange. She said, Oh, I have this very smart friend. We intend at Bang One Goodalo together. And um, he is really smart and all those things. So I sent my I forwarded my CV. And that's the thing. The, the thing about networking is that it's not that anybody is doing you favoritism or anything. These guys they receive thousands, tons of emails every day for them to be concerned about your application for internship. What networking basically does is that it brings you, it gives you attention. Are you good? Do you have the grades? Is your CV well balanced? Okay. All right. Now you have the attention. They can easily see you because it's possible you send an email for, send an application for internship and it just gets lost in the crowd. You know, it just gets lost like that. So, you should you should ensure to to network as much as you can. Go on LinkedIn, reach out to people, people that finish from your school, people that work in the industry you want to come in, people that work in the company you want you would want to intern in. Meet these people, reach out to them to say, oh well, I'm this, I'm that, I'm very desirous, and be very polite about it. Be very polite about it. I'm this, I'm that, I'm very desirous of this. Explain your situation to them. Oh, well, I'm currently on strike. And all of those things. Network with them. I remember back then in my favorite level in Ife, 
there were times where where um, I had to leave Ifed to attend some conferences in Lagos because I needed to see some partner, and that was one that was how I got in to Templars for my internship. So there's this conference we attended in um, in the Lagos Court of Arbitration in Deki. I met a partner there. I introduced myself to say, oh well, I'm this and that, and thankfully i had done some few things online that she had seen. And it was really calm. And she was okay, okay, okay. So months later, I think a year after, actually, I was looking for an internship at Templars. I was just sending an application. I wasn't getting any positive response per se. I reached out to her to say, I'm very desirous of interning in your firm. Of course, she's a partner. And the next, the, within, the, within the hour, I got an email for invitation for a test, for an interview, within the hour after sending that email. So she just forwarded the CV. Imagine you. A partner can easily get you an internship. A senior citizen can easily get you an internship if you have, I mean, if you've networked with them and um, they put in a word for you. And mind you, you are not a dummy. You are not being corrupt by asking someone to put in a word for you. It's just very possible that your CV gets lost or the HR will just, just like your name. What Yeah, I'm saying is it a minimum one? All right, Toshiku, please move your mic. Okay. Yeah. So it's just possible that the HR doesn't like your name or anything. That's why your CV, maybe they don't even see your CV. But networking gives you that attention. Oh, this person is good. And the funny thing about it, for, for, for some time, you just be like, oh, where have you been? Like, this is just an impressive CV. And you hey, you'll be like, well, I've been trying to reach you guys ever since. Where have you been? Why didn't you call me? But of course, when someone puts in a word for you, it, it, it gets that that's needed, that's uh, what's called that force. I, I, I helped someone to get an internship with my friend this summer. And he reached out to me, he's my friend, he reached out to me and was like, oh, well, this, well, that. Of course, I put in a word for him because I, 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 knew, I knew he's a solid guy. He's like activity, he was president of the tax club. Um, writing, I think a few things. He attended some conferences here and there, blah blah blah. But I didn't know he had good grades. So let me tell you this way. So when I, I reached out to the HR, I told him about him, and it was like, and she was like, oh well, is there a problem that when the time comes, I should remind? Ah, uh, so I did, and he had already applied. So I just told him to send me his CV. When he sent me his CV, I saw a first class. I'm not going to lie to you. The the ginger I had to. To follow up with their picture. The next time I went to meet the HR, I just told her that, oh, uh, man, this person is actually a first class, uh, what's called, student. You know, if you are networking and you've done your own homework, it will give the person who is doing the follow up for you the confidence because you are not trying to bring someone who has a pass through the back door or anything. What, did, what does the company want? The company wants a first class student or a two one student, or I mean, a two two student or anything. Okay, this person has this requirement. I'm just telling you that. See this applicant. Now, it's left for the, uh, what's called now, for you to do your bit by passing the test and passing the interviews, you know? So that's that about networking. Go on LinkedIn. Go on LinkedIn. Go on anywhere, any, 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 uh, anywhere really. Just get the contact, the people in your industry. And it flows from knowing the people in your industry. After knowing them, don't stop at that place. Reach out to them. Reach out to them. And networking involved. So I think some of the I applied to partners, like to some partners to say, own senior CC to say, oh, well, I introduced myself. I'm this, I'm that. I, I. Just hold on. I'm sure my screen here. Yeah? Let me see if I still have some of those. Um, some of those applications. I don't know if my, my Gmail is open. Yeah. Uh, um, Mr. Great, you consider stopping to share your screen when you want to open your private information, like choose a particular mm -hmm. window to share so that people will not see what you are doing. Do you understand? 
Okay, let's just yeah, understand. Let's just continue. I'd have loved to show you some of those. Uh, what's called now? Some of those. Uh, some of those applications that I sent, I introduced myself. Oh, well, my name is Great Oiki. I'm this, I'm that. I'm an undergraduate student of this. I'm currently on the 2 1. With an aggregate of 54%. 54%. Sorry, I think they just got to my life. Give me a minute. So sorry for the interruption. Like I had to change my face. So this and that, and I've done this, I've done that. I'm in the Mutin Society. I've represented my school in this and that. You know, just like that, just conversations, just um, uh, a line like that, and tell them that you're desirous of it. And yeah, and you wind them a bit. Oh, I read about you. I know you do this, you do that. You are a big name in the industry, you are this and that. I mean, everybody likes praises. But let, let them know, let them know that you've done some research on them and you recently wrote about this and this. I really admire it. I read it and decided to reach out to you. So let them know that, oh, you're conversant about what they do. Because don't just have a random it show that oh i know that you do this and this i know you've done this and this it's um it, it, it really makes sense like that so um uh so that's networking and let's move on to okay we basically we basically talked about that how do you do networking reach out to them via email and they usually have their emails on the website i mean they are work emails they associate if they don't reply on LinkedIn, you can send, send it polite. And yeah, you can look for a point of connection. I remember when a lady was trying to reach out to a partner in my firm. She was looking for an internship. She was trying to, aside from just meet, reaching out to them because of internship, you first off, you could reach out to them for mentorship. Mentorship. So this lady from my school, she finished from some university. She's Muslim. And this lady that is trying to reach her is Muslim as well, and she finished from the same. You can see that there's a point of connection there. For no, unless the person is like busy, busy, or is didn't see the email. If they send, oh yeah, ma, I read a lot about you. You are one of the. It, it's admirable to see Muslim women blazing the trade. There are very few, and it, it's a fact, really. There are very few Muslim women who are. Not so many, maybe not very, not so many Muslim women who are partners. It shows determination, it shows doggedness, and all of those things. Oh, well, I finished from the same school with you. I finished from Mife, from University of, of Africa, Wolo University. I did this and that. I really want to be like you in the coming years. Even if you don't want to be like the person, at least just like more so that they will know that you have the point of connection. So, establish that relationship. Okay, I want to be a mentor. I want to be a mentee. I would want you to mentor me. You know, that kind of thing. When the person mentors you for some time and you tell them that, oh, well, as who still has, for example, as who still hasn't called off the strike or this hasn't still happened, you would, um, what's it called now? You would easily, you would get an internship like that to say, oh, well, just come, yeah, come and intern with me, come to my firm. And even if that person does, I know someone when the person finished from law school, it was one of his mentors that is a partner in the firm that recommended him for employment in another firm. So these things happen. It's not, I wouldn't want to say it's corruption. Was it qualified? Yes. What well, all he just needed was the platform. He just needed the platform, you know. So moving on to do's and don'ts of your CV. If you are, like I said earlier, so for some of these things, I had, this slide, I prepared it in less than 10 minutes. I'm sorry, 20 minutes. I didn't have the time. I'm sorry, but I'm just trying to make you follow what I'm trying to say, but I have many thoughts in all of these things. So for see this tomorrow. So basically, and I mean, Alex will give you a solid guide. 
it will give you um, good tips on this. So, I mean, if you're on a two, 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 one, two, two, or a two, one, and it's a 3.5, 3 there's no point putting 3.5. There's no point. Just put a second class upper and move on with your life. If you're on a four, if you're on a two, one, and it's, let's say, 4.4, 4. Um, 4. 4 something, you can put that to say, okay, two, one, so the next is strong two, one. And yes, there's a thing like a strong two, one. There's a thing like that. So, you know, because... Yeah, this is how it works. It's a sifting process. They just want to get eliminated because they can't take everybody. Would, do they want to take everybody? Yes, but they don't have the capacity. So they can't take everybody. So they sift people out. So whatever thing that you think that may give you an edge, do that. And um, your articles, build your CV, write articles, write articles, activities, extracurricular activities. Join the Mooting Society, for example. Join the Student Finance Club. For example, go for some of these finance competitions, whatever industry that you are doing, if that is pharmacy or anything, who are the industry leaders in pharmacy? Know these things. That is microbiology. We are looking to to be into a different industry. Know these things. And for some people who say you study course like courses that do not relate to these things exactly to the corporate life exactly, you can start joining the student finance club to because finance now as it is it gives you a mirage of opportunities like so many opportunities rather and mirage rather and you would um see opportunities in those things and join those clubs join those associations volunteer for these things join any association that you think that oh i know all of these things really you must have a clear picture maybe not exactly clear we must have a fair picture of what you want or what you want to become in life, you know? Yeah, so do the, do these things like that. And um, I'm jumping out of that. Now, when you've gotten the internship, what do you do? How do you leave a lasting impression? First of all, it's your attitude to work. It's your attitude to work. How do you, when, when, you, when you receive a task, how do you take it? It's understandable that these people, they understand that you're just an undergraduate. You may not know some of these things. Some of these things require practice, you know? So you, you would need practice. You need to practice. Um, yeah, I don't think you can practice practice good attitude. You just have a good attitude to work. When they give you a work, a task, if you don't know it, reach out to the person to say, oh, could you please? Please explain this thing. Sure. Could you please ex explain this thing? Be teachable in that sense. Are you teachable? teachable? Let the person explain it to you. And don't be afraid, really, if that's your fear, because I understand that that may, may be some people's fear. Oh, when I, when I start interning, they give me this task, I'm not able to do it, they give me that task, all they think of me. That shouldn't really be your concern right now. Just be open. Even the best of us, it happens to us in work. You, they give you some tasks, and you're just like, two days ago, they gave me one task. So when I saw the task, I had a headache. I went to sleep. I'm not even going to lie. Like, it was so bad. The next day, I woke up to it, and I was like, oh, why don't I go this way? I'm good at it. So it's normal. It's normal for you to experience these things. Take notes. Ask questions. Something you don't understand. Just have a positive attitude. I know I don't understand it, too, but please teach me. I'm willing to learn. And all of those things. And among your fellow interns, intense build relationships not just with yeah you supervise so build a relationship to supervise so because if eventually you desire to work in that place as a full staff when you're coming back it will be easier for you to get in if you put the people there it will be very easy for you to get in in that sense because if you've met the requirements making good grades and all that requirements they may have it will be easy for you to get in the people that give you work, build relationships with them, get their contacts, keep in touch with them. How oh, I'm doing this now, I'm writing my icon, I'm writing my um, ACCU, I'm writing my law school exams, I'm in law school, I just finished, as well as called of strike. Thank you for the opportunity the other time. You know, just build relationships with these people because they would, even if not in that they are friends, they may have people that they would, they would recommend you to. And um, amongst your interns, build, build relationships as well. Well, I, I interned at Alokwan, I interned at Alokwan, and there was this guy, 
very young boy back then. I was helping him to, I didn't really know him, but I was helping him to do most of the task. And he opened up to me that his dad was the then managing director of Unilever Nigeria, like very, very rich. He was staying in Banana Island then. I was like, oh, wow. So unbeknown to me, he was telling his dad about me. And his dad invited me over for the day. That was my first time. I went to dinner. I really spoke with the guy. Very, very, you, you, you um, guesstimate how a relationship you have with someone would go. I can't even go deep into this it's talking about some of these things, but build relationships with people. Be nice, just be nice. I'm not going to cite internship, really. It's still a, a general life um, lesson. Just be nice to people, um, build relationships with them. With them, when you are interning, be of your best behavior. You're not going there to take pictures, 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 or to paper your mates that, oh, I'm interning in, uh, which other firm is there again? I'm interning at Alex. I'm interning there. I'm interning there to paper them. No, 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 no. Of course, that's normal. You should do it because you, you, you should earn your, you should smell your roses. But aside all of those things, be focused as well. Walk, 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 and walk. So I would stop here. I think it's 40, 40, is it up to 40, um, 45 minutes, 44 minutes. I would stop here and take questions and uh, hopefully chip in anything I didn't, I didn't talk about. So for me, for me, really, those are, the, those are the basic things about getting an internship. Networking, very important. Your build yourself by building yourself, your activities, your grades, activities, including the writing as well, and all of those things. Ensure that you, you you beat yourself to the extent that your know, someone was I was reviewing someone's CV is in the law school two days ago last week yeah and he he was bothering about applying now he made it to two 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 from his undergrad I just saying that guy yeah, just focus on your law school please just focus on your law school there's no way I will tweak your CV to put this one year to put that one year that will change the fact that most of these law firms will not take a two two graduate. Most of them, I'm not saying that's not the, them, they can't or they won't, but generally, generally they, they would not. So why not just focus your energy on what you have now? And I'm, I, as much as possible, I'm going to be real with you guys. Make good grades though. Make good grades. And I'm saying this because I believe the reason why you are here is because you see a path in this uh, industry. Make good grades. They're, they're very, it's very important for you to make good grades. It's very, very important. It's very important. It's, it's almost a tool of your trade. If good grade does not work, or you, I know you make reference to this person does not make good grade or they don't make good grade and he's working here and he's doing well. That's quite all right. But now you have the opportunity to make good grade. Why not make good grade? Why do you want to deceive yourself to say, I would be like this person? Do you know the hidden stories in that person's journey? So don't compare yourself with people that did not make good grade that are doing well. I understand. Fine. You would do, nobody is damning you that you would not do well. Of course not. You would do well. But like my daddy would say, you have the tools in your hand now. Why not work with what you are rather than being futuristic? Why? Why? Just make good grades. If you have the ability to right now, I'm telling you, make good grades. Because you find instances that if you don't make good grades, you can intern in 10,000 places and make bad grades. Someone with a double first class or a first class may get a job over you. And most likely so. Most likely so. Internship per se is not a substitute for good grade. If nobody is telling you that, I'll tell you. I've been working for three years now or so. Internship per se is not a substitute for good grades. You find these days now, you find students are lazy. All they want to do is intern, intern, build beautiful CV, but they don't want to be serious with their actual work. So some interns, they came to our firm, they, uh, just finished interning, and all they did were, they were taking pictures, 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 pictures. Pictures, pictures, pictures. You internship would not substitute for the good for good grades, which is the hard work. You need to put in the work because it doesn't end here. You should do something that when you are applying to a firm in the US, they will be like, oh, this guy has done quality work. It doesn't end in gaining an internship in the Nigerian law firm or a Nigerian bank or a Nigerian institution. Like I said earlier, these things will be with you for life. Like they'll just be with you. 
to you for life. I really don't know how to twist the truth. It's just the truth. It's just the truth. Whether you you are you have not made if you if if you're at a point of no return now, continue doing what you are doing that you feel is a good substitute. But if you can make it, you can make amends or anything, just make it to a beg. But make good grades because there are so many people doing internships right now. That let me tell you how it works. So when you five they call them about Bango, which is B, Olani, Udo Odoma, which is U, and T, which is 10 plus. About 25 of them, like the top, top firms in Nigeria, law firms in Nigeria. You are competing with people who schooled abroad. You are competing with people who have stronger networks than you do. Because, of course, their father, their classmates with a partner in the firm, and they equally have same grades with you, same qualifications with you. How do you want to fight that kind of thing? How do you want to, so these are these are people you are competing with. So just doing internship, internship, internship without putting in the work will easily throw you outside aside. They will easily throw you aside. So it, 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 it's real out there. It's real out there. Things change, but with what you have right now, put in the work. So thank you very much. Thank you. I, I really want questions. If if there's any issue that I didn't touch, you, you should let me know. I really want to know. I, I, I feel there are so many, there may be some things I've not really talked about here, but with your questions, I'll be able to, to talk about them. Thank you so much, um, Oiki, for that. I, I think you have been very, very sincere. And you've said it as it is. And um, I believe every person on this call must have learned something. And I want to apologize to people from other departments um, who are not lawyers. <laughs> I, I know he put so much emphasis on law, but if you remove what he has said, about lawyers and law firms and add whatever it is you are doing. Maybe you are an economist. So you put um, economics firms like um, KPMG, Deloitte and the rest of them. It, it, it also works out. The principles work out the same. So I will now go yeah. more to the questions. Like, like you understand I gave so many specific examples that related to law, but, but those were those were how I experienced them. And I, I intend that the stock exchange, I intend that uh, Brand Marshall Bank and um, African Finance Corporation, these are not exactly law, law firms. They're not even law firms, first off. And the same principles here, I got in, uh, uh, what's called African Finance Corporation because, oh, what's the thing? So you just see that, oh, you've done something, then take something. I had the opportunity. When I met the then um, general counsel of the African Finance Corporation, it was very easy for me to say, oh, I, I'm looking for an internship slot. And the conversation for that like that. So but if I, like, there was no way I would have met him if I hadn't done something to make me meet him. So you, you understand what you're at. Let's be honest with ourselves. You can't tell me that in economics, the principle that you should make good grade does not apply. It applies. Or you should be joining some very important societies. I know quite a number of my friends. There was a guy that I interned with at RAN. He's a big boy now. He's currently in London with Bank of America. He was one of the very first people that Bank of America started giving internships from, not internship, but pardon me, uh, from Nigeria directly. Uh, what I mean by this was that then Bank of America they, in their London office, they're trying to expand 
uh, into uh, EME or Sub-Saharan Africa, whatever the market was, and they needed people to fill in that vacancy. So, and this we, we discussed at length, and these are principles. He studied business administration in Uniben, and it was of course he did activities. He was the president of the he was the president of their students finance club. He, he did well, he made a two one from Uniben. All of this. So these principles, they are just normal. Did he know his industry? Yeah, yeah, he knew his industry. He, he knew the leaders in his industry. At the time, was, we were discussing about how he wanted to get into AFC from RAND and all of those things. It was messaging someone inside AFC that he had networked with. So these are principles that really, really apply. These are principles that apply generally. These are principles that apply generally. Know your industry. I want you to know your industry. If there's a tweak to it, or there's a bit of difference between my industry and your industry, you would see it and know how to properly apply it. People who have gone before you ask them questions. Ah, boss, how far? Why you doing? How should I? How should I do it? Am I doing it the right way? You know that kind of conversation. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. So as as I was saying, and as you have reiterated. These principles work across board. In, if, if you make a very good grade in your course, you move ahead of somebody who did not do that. If you are looking towards an internship, if you follow the principles you've learned today, it will give you the same rewards. Now let's look at the questions in the chat before we ask them to ask their questions. Um, Face to face or verbally. The uh, Sumbom says, "How does writing help with application for internships, though? Do you add it to the CV or something?" And that's in reference to your um, statement about articles. You mentioned that you can write articles and it will help to introduce you to things, right? So, how would you feature that? Okay, so. I think it's something Alex will talk about in writing CV, but let me, let me say this. I had, an I had an interview in December, 1st of December, 2017. I had my first like proper internship interview. And the interview, is it first or third? But I know it was very peculiar because of course my, my first interview. I was playing uh, what they call, in Mimbo. We were doing our final year party party or something. And they, I sent an invite, yeah, sorry, an application. Uh, and then in 2016 or so, or 2017, I can't remember the year, but I know I had written for IMSA. I had written something on proliferations of armed, armed conflicts and proliferation, something related to that. It was a topical issue at that time in 2016. I had written for the Advocate Journal in IFA Law. And the guy called me for the interview. Um, then it was the KE and I for and the firm then. Now, when I got to the interview, we were just chatting and I was like, oh, where you've written? You said you've written stuff. Can you send me those articles? That was like, that was all I, I traveled from Ife to Lagos to just talk to someone to say hi and send him the articles. And I sent him the articles and the next thing was I saw an internship offer. So lawyers are, it's not just your lecturers that write. Even people in practice write. And the reason why they write is because, oh, well, there is a new issue. I'm advising Shell. I'm advising Chevron. They brought something about the petroleum industry act that affects their business. How would they know it? I would write an article to them explaining this thing or that, or do a presentation to them. And usually, usually it's, it's via articles to say, okay, well, this is what it says, this is how it affects your business, this is what you should do going forward, and all of those things. And the same thing for, let's say you are doing P, you are doing an internship for PwC. It may not be writing in that sense. It would only be writing because they still write or make presentations as well. Oh, I, I, I've done a, P, a PowerPoint presentation on this topical issue on the Finance Act 2021, the impact on business, VAT has been increased from 5% to 7.5% and all of those things. And now, I mean, as an economist, inflation, so many dollars is at, is over 700 now. You can write on it. You can publish it for 
tech kappa or some other neural matrix or some other and if you ask to know about it's very easy there's this guy very smart guy finished from if as well it was a big overall base graduate is femi 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 lawa also femi, like femi was femi was writing and he was a he was a mad analyst he was he was a crazy analyst very very analytical if if you how would you be able to analyze the market if you are not writing in that sense the, the things that you are reading as an economist or as an accountant is what because people have written on it the topical issues now that are, that are happening because people are written on it imagine that you write something if the director of pwc or some other big company wants to get information on the subject they usually go what, what, what are people writing on it what is happening what, what is causing the inflation and if you've written per chance he sees your article per chance you message him or something it clicked oh yeah i was the person that wrote this i wrote this and this and that so it just happens like that it helps your application because they are in the business of sharing making money how do they make money they make money from clients they inform clients they help clients minimize their risk and this goes for corporate lawyers as well even for litigation lawyers you write you down you write brief and everything so the writing is very very important and reading so you see it goes like if you have some if you have knowledge you would be able to paint things down so all right so i, don't that, know that, 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 that I think that's very good that's a very good way to look at it what you write you can always introduce it in your cv you can introduce it in conversations you can state that this is what I've done and it helps to speak to your quality as a scholar. You wanted to add something, Greg? Yes, I wanted to add something. And um, for, for people who are looking for further studies as well, join, meet your lecturers, help them with work. Help them with, when I mean work, co-author papers with them. It says that, oh, sir, there's this topical issue I really want you to see. This is my first draft on it. What do you think about it? He reviews it, and if he wants to join, you guys could, could publish on the newspaper or something. When you're applying for further studies, these things help you because you're applying to a school, and you see that writing would help you. There are scholars in that school. What scholars, what they majorly do is that they read and write, majorly. And you see someone that is doing their thing. You've written articles that have been published here, you've written articles that have been, that have been published there and there. It would help you, even in, aside getting in, that's why, I'm, that's why I said earlier, these things, they stick with you for life, for life. The article you've written 10 years ago is for is yours. Is yours, you know? So that's it. Right, I think that goes without saying. I, I find that our students in Nigeria do not benefit a lot from students lecturer mentorship that no. is um, what you think of a teacher is somebody who marks your script teachers are way beyond that <laughs> it's only in nigeria that students are shaking when they come to see there i i don't want to go into all of that but you've gotten the advice which is right 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 if you have an article submit to a lecturer you know it's approachable with their influence, they can publish a more reputable um, mm. outlets that will help your uh, help your application for further study. So somebody asks, do law firms look at courses you have done as well? I believe in the no, context of an internship. No, no, not exactly, not exactly, not exactly. Especially for an undergraduate internship, not exactly. They, they, they basically know what you've done. And because I've had to be, aside, okay, I, I've interned in, the only top law firm I didn't intend in, or I've not worked with, is Solanimo. I've not had anything to do with Solanimo. All the other about firms, I've, I have had something to do with them. So I can give you like this, this. They, they really don't care. So don't go about really listing. They understand that, oh, well, you've done the basic, you've done commercial law, which is the basic really, you've done contract. No, contract is a basic. You've done contract, you've done commercial law, and these are compulsory courses. Or for 
your economics now. I don't know the courses you, you are doing. But for an undergraduate internship, they really don't care. And let me tell you how this, how this thing plays out. When you come out of school, for most firms, for most companies, you go through rotation, you go through departments. You go through departments. You do, like I did litigation for some time. I went, I went to go like five times. I did litigation for some time. I did measures and acquisition for some time. I did banking and finance for some time. And now I'm doing project finance. So usually for some friends, they make you go around to these things. They assume that you don't have enough knowledge about these things. And when, even if you go into a law firm and you're doing an internship, and they ask you a question that, about IP, it, it's very okay when you tell them that, oh, I, I have not done IP. Like they understand is not, nobody will kill you really. I've not done IP. These are the courses I did. These are the courses I did. And if the person is coming from the angle of taking courses, because when we were in school, we had things like, oh, I want to take these courses because it will help me in practice. Omo really knows until you get at what you, the kind of law you want to do. Circumstances may change these things. But if your main is to your main aim is to take a course that will give you good grades, oh, go for it. Don't be the, the knowledge you can always get the knowledge after. If I had been doing IP, I didn't do IP. If I had been practicing IP for how many years or how many months, if I read that, thing, I'll get it. If I read that, thing, I'll get it. So you can always get the knowledge. Law firms do not really care about the courses you've done in school. Firms, companies do not really care about the courses you've done in school. You are in a particular, you are in a course that relates to what they are doing, right? That's the basic thing, and they understand that as an economics, as an accountant, you should have some basic level of understanding, or as a pharmacist that relates to their general line of business, really. You know, right. but if you want to, if you want to specialize a bit, you could join the, let's say. Student finance club to say, oh yeah, I'm very good at this. But no one will hold you to the truth to say, should we say you are good? Come and explain for us. No, no. <laughs> no one will do that. I think yes. our undergraduate students overestimate the importance of the courses they do. That is, when you leave school, the idea is that you're educated. You know yes, how to that's find true. things. So when you are doing yeah. an internship, they know you are just a young undergraduate who doesn't know anything even a first year phd student they look at you like a baby this one no, <laughs> that's from an undergraduate student who is just doing an internship relax don't, don't just relax don't they stress like, they so much. yeah they understand that what they really need from a lawyer like lord denny said a lawyer or most or graduates generally the best lawyers are not those who know all the law are you able to find the law when I give you a task, are you able to find the law? If I give you a task to say analyze this thing or do this chart, are you able to do it as an accountant or economist? So that's the basic thing. Are you teachable? Are you intelligent enough? You understand? You learn on the job. That's the thing. Nobody expects you to come with You learn on the job. I'm still learning. I'm still, I just told you about a task that I did yesterday that gave me a big. Like seriously, I do paracetamol. I'm still learning. So you learn on the job. Thank you so much for that. So this is an important question. Many of the people on this call, a number of them are first year students. So if someone had just gotten admission in school and did one week of lecture and also went on nine months track, <laughs> is there any hope for them to do an internship? There is, there is an hope. I know internship per se, there's always so much hope for, for you. I told you I started interning in 500 level. You don't start, you don't, you don't necessarily need to start with the top guys to say, oh, I'm interning with this firm. I must get a top internship at first. There must be, there should be a lawyer, a lawyer's firm that is close to your house or your family relation that is a lawyer. Reach out to those people, join them to court. Before I, before I gained admission, I was, I was um, going to court with a lawyer for close to a year, or before my before we eventually told us to resume, I was always going to court with him. That helped me really. It helped me to understand some basic things about law. And I didn't know about big firms in Lagos. All I wanted to do was finish school and go back to Warwick and start working. 
<laughs> I didn't know so much about anything happening in Lagos. But what I'm saying is, is that it shows you that you, you still have so much time to do so many things with the knowledge you have. I didn't have the knowledge you have now. I, I didn't have it then. I was just there. Was just, so you can join someone at first. So this holiday now, you join a lawyer, you go to court or anything, you do one or two. It might not be a big law firm. They may not be big law, big law firms. Observe proceedings. So you at least when you're writing your CV, you would have something. I intend with say Agbabi Aka and Co. It's a law firm. You should have experience. I intend with that place. I attended court proceedings. Nobody will kill you. Nobody expects so much from you at this point, you know. So for the hundred level students, yeah, those are the things you should. And you, you guys are so you guys are so lucky, really. For the conversation about the grades and writing. Grades and writing. So Right. Thank you yeah. so much for that. And I would say, um, if you are not a lawyer, find things around you that are, find um, closer firms that do what you are studying, mm -hmm. right? And volunteer with them. Say, can I work with you, sir? Then write them a letter, find them on LinkedIn. That is how you do it. It doesn't have to be that you've been in Lagos in a flashy office. You are just a first year student. Yes. Mm -hmm. So start from somewhere. And I, I just want to speak about this, the pressure young people put themselves under this. I don't know, maybe it's because of social media. You want to know everything. You want to be master of everything. Relax. You can develop yourself, give yourself opportunity to grow. Every person, every step, Anywhere you enter in life, right? Anywhere you enter in life, you always be the most recent person there. So even if you are a PhD student, they will say this one, if you have finished your PhD, they will say this is just a PhD of less than five years. And that's a mm -hmm. PhD, right? So relax, then give yourself opportunity to learn. So let me quickly ask you, if a person has a first class, does he need to include the grade? like a 4.70, or do you think the person should just write first class? You should include it. So for that kind of 4.70, you should now. You should, you should include it. OK, should that's, include that's it. straightforward. Mm -hmm. Somebody says he's a tech guy. What do you advise he goes about internship? Because I believe what is his interest is not what he's studying in school. I mean, OK, yeah, that's, that's true. true. Yeah. That, 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 that's, that's really true. But I don't know if you are an experienced tech guy or you are learning. But if you are if you are a tech guy, to be honest, to be honest, these things apply apply to you. My sister is awaiting admission, not awaiting admission. She's awaiting resumption at UNA, and she was with me for since January. She's she's learning. She's coding now. I I I made her to start coding. I got her laptop in March to start coding and all of these things. She's coding now and the. Um, these same principles I've explained to you about reaching out to people, following people, industry leaders. Well, your tech guys, especially, that's the thing about knowing your industry. You find them on Twitter a lot. Tech guys, you find them on Twitter a lot. Reach out to them. Tell them that you are doing this and you are doing that, and you like what they are doing. You like what they are doing. And you mean about not not um, doing the course you really like and this is a general thing this, this is a general this is a general um, thing outside same thing i told my younger sister she gained admission in OU some years back is it a year or two years ago and it was one course i i can't remember the name and i told her not to go looking at myself now i've told her to go as a tech guy you shouldn't bother about the fact that you're in school uh, doing a course that you don't like but one thing you should do I beg you, take that course seriously. Don't go and fail. That's one. Because I guess the point you are making is that, oh, you've decided that you want to do tech, and your course, doing well in your course does not guarantee success in your job as a tech guy. I know that, but at least try. Try. So just try. Try and you're already there. You're already there. And there's this thing I tell people, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. So when someone asks you that, oh, you studied this, I understand that you're a tech bro now. When you were doing this course, when you were doing zoology, your botany, how did you fare? Oh, yeah, you could just boastfully, for the, for the fun of it, 
I did well. I did okay. I did okay. Because if you start entertaining that thought of should I do well with this course, you then having issues of oh let me drop out or something. Just try. Just try and think. That's a long conversation. And the reason I'm not going to go deep into it is because I don't know you personally to say oh you shouldn't need you shouldn't bother studying so much in your other course you get. But if I if I'd known you personally or know your story, I'd be able to give a uh, well tailored advice. But for now, just try your best and make a balance. But yeah. be serious, be serious, of course, with what you want to do. Reach out to the guys in your industry, you know your industry, and talk to them about internships. The internships, the internships. Yes, I just wanted to add there that I had a student who was doing very well a few years ago, and she was so made up her mind on dropping out of school. And she was a law student in her fourth year. I tried very hard to speak to her, but she wouldn't listen. I think she finally dropped out. A few years later, I saw her back in school. She was now struggling to finish her clearance because she now figured that part of the quick way she can relocate is to get admission to study abroad. So it's usually easy to just finish what you have in your hand Yes. Whatever you want to do with your life is your business. You'll be here for 100 years. Knock yourself out. You know, go for it. So I think our last question here is for first year students, Oyin is asking, should I finish a session or a semester before I can be considered for an internship? Is there any requirement like that in your mind? No, no. Because, no. I've seen... This guy I told you about that his dad was something something in new level. Now he was a secondary school, school student in the UK who was interning. He was in secondary school then. Now he's in the university. So we have secondary school interns as well, not just university guys. So there's no requirement. You know what you want to do. You want to do law. Like you fairly have an idea that this is what I want to do. Maybe until something comes up in your journey. But for now, this is what you want to do, right? And just go ask, go for it. And if you are talking about the big firms, of course, unless someone puts in a word for you. But one thing, since many people here are on the level, say one thing you should really, really focus on doing now is mentorship. Reach out to people in the industry. They'll be very eager to mentor you at this very baby, baby stage. Oh, I'm in on that level. I like this and this and this. Don't, don't assume you know so much. Don't feel the need to impress by telling them what you don't know, you know? Mentorship. Oh, let me let, let them let them guide you through. That's it. Let them guide you through. Let them guide you through. So right. your, to your question, you don't need to finish with your second semester. You meet a, like I said earlier, I meet a law firm around you. The guy would be so eager. The guy would be so eager to take you to court. Right. And that builds your experience at an early age, early stage. Imagine on the first semester, you have one experience. So when time goes on, you're removing the, the experiences you don't like from your CV to make it. I mean, you know, Right. Thank you so much for that. This d yeah. discussion is being recorded. It will be posted on YouTube in case your data was not able to have you see everything. <clears throat> Further, um, the composition, just for the records, is made up of different students. And um, some of them are medical students, some are recent graduates, and some are studying in universities outside the country. At least I know one or two here as well mm -hmm. so um i think even if you were studying i think for a course like medicine that is the only thing that is a little different because of medicine in nigeria especially mm -hmm. is well structured you you won't really have time to step out of the medical setup so to speak but if you are somebody that is a medical doctor in learning, in training, and you want to do other things. Let's say you want to be a public health doctor or a community medicine practitioner. Then interning in firms like Safing and the rest of them that do what you want to do is now important. And then you have to also use the same principles that he's talked about. But then I'm not sure hospitals do internship we wouldn't want you to go and kill anybody, right? 
<laughs> but <laughs> the one thing I think you can do really that helps them is volunteering, community service. Mm. That's that's in a sense that's one in that's one of the uh, ways of interning, and that's one of the things that strengthens the application. Is someone doing a sanitation or something or a group? Talking about this, going to um, less privileged communities to do this and that, volunteer, yeah. do first aid in those things. Those are things you can do to improve your C, your your curriculum over time. So, so yes, volunteering. I mean, if you're a doctor, you want to move into the academic um, part of medicine. You want to produce research papers. There are organizations they are doing that, and to be able to work in the top organizations like UNICEF you need to volunteer in one of my classes of my students that i teach i had a student that came to audit my course and she was not even a law student she was somebody in public health but she wanted to learn international law because she wanted to intern with UNAIDS. right yes. she just came and sat in my class as i was teaching you know so i after the classes, she came to me and said, I just want to learn international law because I have um, the mind set, my mindset on working with these organizations. My university does not offer medicine, but they offer um, public health and things of that nature. So um, I think that we have had a very fruitful discussion. Um, I know that many of you do not have data to last so long, but thank you for the sacrifice. It will really help you. Um, I want to say a very big thank you to Great for making the time to be here. Um, as I said, he's talking to us today is not paid for. He is coming here on his own and we really appreciate him. Thank you so much, Great, for taking yeah, you're welcome. time. Um, we'll be here tomorrow again. We'll be talking about writing CVs and then using LinkedIn for making sure that you can network with people. You know, he has mentioned a lot about LinkedIn. He has also talked about developing a student CV. Make sure you are here tomorrow by seven. I don't want to talk too much about that, but make sure you're here. It will be very loaded. Two speakers, Money recently hosted the LinkedIn or your event. Um, so he knows his stuff. Um, um, Alex, that will also be coming to speak tomorrow, is very, very aware of his stuff. Um, I think, uh, should we indulge this last question? He says, how can you go about securing foreign internship positions? We are really out of time. You know what you are going to do? Let us use this as a learning opportunity. Why don't you write great? And then maybe he will answer you, right? So great, would you mind to put your stuff. LinkedIn profile or if you like, if you want to quickly respond to that question, then let's hear what you have to say on it. Okay, so 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 international internships really, it, yeah, it's not far-fetched from, from uh, Moscow, what you have in Nigeria. And, I remember after, before law school, I was trying to get into some international law firms, in, uh, especially SA in South Africa. And by international law firms, I mean offices that have uh, offices in, I mean firms that have offices in, offices in South Africa. And because I, I, I reached out to their London office, they're like, oh, they, they, they weren't taking interns directly and all of those things. Because first off, your Nigerian degree is against you. You should know that. Like you should just know that the Nigerian degree is really against you. But now the market is becoming more more relaxed. Really, it's becoming more relaxed because I, I think um, is it link letters? Link letters for for law firms. It is a a clerkship program where students can directly from Nigeria get into foreign international internships and. Um, these general principles about reaching out to people when you reach out to them that work in the company desire abroad they they will, they will tell you oh these are the things you have to do this and that and when you get i mean when you get 
um, when you reach out to them, you when you reach out to them, you you would get to know what they require from you with respect to that internship because of course they may have their own um, specific requirements for each in, for their internship, different from what another company. Say you're applying as a, as an economist, you're applying to Bloomberg or Bank of America. And talking about non-law internships now, Bank of America and all of those other places, they are uh, platforms that help you secure those internships. There are platforms that help you secure those internships. There's this very popular one. There's this very popular one that uh, I don't know why it's leaving my memory now. This very popular one that helps with financing internship, getting to Goldman Sachs, getting into Bank of America, and um, some other international um, what's it called firms or organizations by firms. Now I don't mean law firms. SEO Africa, yes. SEO Africa, you should check them out if you are not aware of them and you are in economics or finance. SEO Africa, they help you to get into this placement. Check SEO Africa, yeah, and they post some of these opportunities. So they will tell you the requirements that you would meet. I can't give you all the requirements that these um, companies give, but they'll tell you the requirements. But basically, you should get good grades. I mean, basically. So when you, at an early stage, if you know some of these requirements, at this early stage, you, you start molding yourself to meet some of these things, if, uh, if these are the things you want to eventually do. You know? All right. All right. Thank you so much, Great. Um, You're welcome. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. I have personally learned a lot. Maybe if, if you have spoken to me when I was in my second year, I would have had <laughs> internship experience, but it's good. When you said eight years ago, they didn't have this much information. I was now worried because I left university in 2012. That is 10 years now. <laughs> so we, we, we weren't even captured in your eight years ago, but that's fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, we really thank you. So I will see everyone tomorrow. It's been a very insightful discussion. I will send out the links to your email so you can watch and learn on your own space on your own pace the youtube link will be out and um this is where we'll wrap it up for tonight thank you so much see you thank tomorrow. you everyone I really appreciate bye, bye. You. thank you bye everyone bye everyone